All right, start with this 2006 survey. Um, this is pretty interesting that there's been no historical observations, they say. In 2006, they knew this. No scientific studies that support the confinement of quarantine of groups of people. They said the negative consequences of large-scale quarantine are so extreme uh, that they reject the entire premise. Why are we doing this now if this was already known? Well, I think that in some ways our policy response has sort of become medieval. Uh, we've rejected sort of all that we've learned in modern science about how you contain and respond to a disease and everything that we did so well in uh, previous epidemics, uh, like the flu epidemics that we had in the 50s and 60s. And uh, instead, I think we panicked because we didn't understand what was happening. We didn't believe a lot of the data that was coming out of China. We didn't know that this had been circulating for months in Europe before the meltdown in Lombardy. So we thought it was much faster moving than it really was. And so Europe panicked. They said, China locked down. We're going to lock down too. And uh, the US and the UK held out a little bit from that. But then it was that infamous Imperial College study and it scared everyone. And once those numbers are out there about millions of deaths, if you don't take the most draconian action possible as a politician, you worry about uh, the consequences for you politically. And I think that's why we sort of followed that stampede of hysterical irrationality. It really is mind blowing in a sense, I think, to realize that we had information and data, historical observation and studies that told us that we shouldn't do this, that this could have been avoided while still mitigating the effects of COVID-19. It's, 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 it's really shocking to think uh, of that sort of alternative reality that we could have done what we needed to do without locking down.